Here's a book, it's a Swiss book I bought 20 years ago. That's the front cover of the book and it's got no title. What's the idea? Well, it's there but it's almost invisible unless you shake your head or shake the book up and down and the word C, S-E-E, appears as if by magic. When I spin it round very quickly to show the back cover, again, almost invisible. And then we have the other half of the title which is Saw, Seesaw. He saw, he came and said saw. This is an extraordinary well-produced book from the Swiss on, and on all sorts of optical tricks. Some of them are amazing, some of them are very well known, some of them I've heard about, and these two particular ones I want to show you is a great rarity for me, because out of all the optical books I've got, this is the only one I've ever come across where it has what they call conical anamorphism. Instead of being a cylinder of sil silver, making the picture appear, it's a cone and stuff. So I'll do that and I'll bring it right under the camera. And that peculiar frog-like looking sort of bizarre picture turns into a person's face with the two eyes pulled back into the right position. Very strange. But I could sort of make out it was going to be some sort of critter, whereas the previous page, the other picture I'll show in this book, completely baffled me. I couldn't understand what that was going to be and I could not have predicted when I saw the result. I just couldn't see how it could happen, but there we are. That now is suddenly a very well-known emblem of the country of Ireland. It's a shamrock. Look at those lovely curved sides of the leaves, all produced from completely square lines, straight lines like that. A remarkable achievement. That's so much more interesting than when you've seen a lot of the, con of the conical anamorphisms. To see cylindrical is magical, I think. So... I want to show a few more of my books, this is one of them, of which I, I do read, run from cover to cover, I often lend them out to people because there's such extraordinary things in them. Um, and every one of them really is a treat to, to find over 25 years of... This is one of these ones with upside down pictures in it, and there's two particularly nice ones, I think, which I do like very much indeed. This is um, a superb one. You don't have to turn it upside down, you just turn it sideways. That is, for all intents and purposes, a frog, a frog, I call it. Now, all I do is not upside down, but just 90 degrees turns perfectly into a horse with its head bent down and very well depicted because it's all in green and it's got a bit, got a punk, bit of colour. Normally it's just a black and white picture, but I think that's a, a very, very nice transformation from that into that. And when you see it for the first time, it's totally unexpected. Then there's another picture of something that I've got in my apartment, which I've had for years and years and years, which is the famous vase, the royal vase produced for the Queen's, the late Queen's, 25th wedding anniversary, I think, with a picture of her on one side and Philip on the other, and you can see the brow here of Philip for the Queen, the nose, the mouth is here, and the chin, and then here's the partner, Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II, celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary all those years ago. So, superb stuff. I'll just show one picture in passing, which is not of the same genre, but it's something I'm going to refer to in the next book, which is Archimboldo. This extraordinary artist in the Middle Ages, late Middle Ages, who produced faces, all produced from flowers and leaves and twigs and things. And when they're put in a certain way, they appear as that. Whereas if I turn the pages upside down, they almost disappear. You could hardly make out a, 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 there is a face there because everything's in the wrong place and the wrong proportion. So I'll show that now in a book here, which is the third one, which is Crazy Art. And again, I'm only going to show two pictures in this. And so many of these things are wonderful to, to see what people are doing with their, with their lives and making wonderful things to appear. And my particular favourite, I think, was this one here, which I'd only come across for the first time recently, which is the artist who makes things out of um, food, loaves of bread and, oh goodness me, green and potatoes. It's a complete landscape made of food. Even the puffy clouds there probably got sort of... Um, I don't know what that is, candy floss. I did do one picture from here, which I put into my last year's Christmas pack, which is that extraordinary art form, which they call... I'll put it there. Graphic, graphite art, which is taking pencils and making these amazing things from them. 
And there's two or three people, there was a Russian who's making them, and there's a chap from, I think, South America, living in America, who makes these as well. Absolutely amazing pictures, all made out of the soft material of graphite, which is very delicate and difficult to do. So that, with all its other many pictures, has been a great thing to, to enjoy myself and to lend to other people to, to enjoy as well. This is a series I've bought, which I, again, I haven't seen this for many years, where an artist just used his hands and painted his hands, or got an artist to help him paint his hands, and then did things with it. In this case, he got a little eye to make it look like um, a zebra. But look what he's got to do with these things here. I mean, amazing art formness. Very obviously, they are human hands being held in funny positions, and just with these little additions of a few, sometimes a few little things he holds, he makes these extraordinary pictures appear. I think these are absolutely magical. So there's a whole range of these books. There's, about, there's one on faces as well, which I've come across, which I think are superb. Again, that's a book I've, well, you can see it's been, it's coming apart a bit, but it's been lent to many, many people over the years because it's got such wonderful pictures in it. This is not pictures of books, but they're magazines which I've come across. There was a shop in, uh, in the West End of London called the Left Handed Shop in Beak Street, which I used to go to several times. It sold nothing but left handed things, and the catalogue itself is left handed because it should be that way around, but that's the back of it, and that's the front, that's the way it opens up and so on. It's, it's one of those bizarre things. But everything they sold in the shop was left handed for left handed people, or sometimes ambidextrous, there's a pair of scissors which can be left or right handed. I like the idea of something as specialised as that. And another very special one, not from UK, but in America, a friend of mine said, Well, have you ever come across Chocolate News before? Chocolate News? I said, No. Well, they say there's articles, it comes out every two months or so, on nothing but chocolate. Every article is about the world of chocolate, 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 chocolate. You notice also that the colour of the thing is vaguely a sort of chocolate colour, and, um, oh no, it's lost its smell. It's past its sell by date. When it was fresh, they sent it to me in the post, it definitely had a distinct aroma of chocolates. <laughs> what a wonderful idea, whether it's still going or not, I don't know, but what a glorious idea. And the last one is a book for. Well, boys for toys, yes, toys for boys. It's one of those books full of things which, when I look through them, I knew that, I knew that. I knew, I, there's so many things I recognise from here because this is exactly what I collect. Toys for boys, lots and lots and lots of things, gadgets. And when I came across this picture here, I thought, hang on, that's a whoopee cushion. I've had that since my childhood. But this one here, oh, yes, look. Well, perhaps it's toys for girls as well, do you think? And I thought, hang on, I'll just dig it out of my case. I've had that for years and years and years. And I told you, it is a toys for girls. It's a boxing nun with a wiggly head, and she does that. And when she's punched someone and knocked them out, she goes, woo, 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 woo. She's won, she's won, she's won. Marvellous. What a lovely idea. Toys for boys and sometimes for girls. <laughs> oh, don't hurt me. <laughs>